Hi. Hola. Konnichiwa. Bonjour. Hallo. Ciao. Yasu. Know any of these languages? Well, these are just seven of the languages that one man can speak, alongside 15 other languages. If you're wondering who in the world can speak 22 languages at such a young age, well, you might see him in Manila, in a province, or even in a lizard. In today's video, we'll be talking about Jose Rizal, his early years, and of course, how the heck he learned to speak 22 languages. Okay, Calamba? Well, you better be as we travel to the city of Calamba, in the province of Laguna. Here, Jose Rizal was born on June 19, 1861, to Francisco Rizal Mercado y Alejandro and Teodora Alonso Rielonda y Quintos. If you think their names are long, wait till you hear Jose Rizal's full name, Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Rielonda. This was because Spanish naming customs decreed the inclusion of Spanish surnames under the rule of Governor General Narciso Cleveria y Zaldúa. Huh. Well, thank heavens we're free. We have more time to answer our exams. Jose Rizal was seventh of the eleven children of Francisco and Teodora. He had nine sisters, Saturnina, Narcisa, Olympia, Lucia, Maria, Concepcion, Josepa, Trinidad, and Soledad, and only one brother, Pashano. The Rizal family was well off. His parents were lessees of a Dominican hacienda in Laguna, and like the majority of Filipino families at the time under a hundred years of colonial rule, the Rizal family was mixed with Spanish, Chinese, and Tagalog ancestry. However, being well-off didn't always guarantee safety from discrimination. Conditions at the time were discriminatory against those who weren't born in the Spanish peninsula. As a child, Rizal was not particularly physically strong. Though sickly and skinny, he had the brains and the desire to want to study and learn lessons from his older sisters. But he learned the most from his uncles, who were like fairy godmothers who each bestowed skills upon Rizal as a child. Gregorio Alonso Riadonda y Quintos, brother of Rizal's mother, would teach him about the value of effort and descarte. Manuel would help him develop his physical strength, and Jose would help him in teaching him his lessons. Great uncles, right? Today, some uncles teach their nephews to sing touch by touch on the karaoke machine. Being born in a beautiful province like Laguna encourages you to be one with nature. And Rizal was definitely not an iPad kid who only stayed at home. With his black dog named Usman and his colony, he would walk or ride his horse around his hometown and interact with the locals, especially if it came to myths and legends about Laguna. He would eventually write about these myths in his later years. Lesson learned? Let your kids out and enjoy nature! A big part of our childhood involves going to school for the first time. Do your parents always bug you about homework? Well, you're not alone. Rizal probably experienced it too. Although he studied in an array of prestigious schools from an early age, his first education was at home with his mother, Theodora. Mother knows best indeed, because at an early age of three, he was already taught the alphabet and how to read. Not long after, his mother discovered that he had a talent for writing, which would soon be his superpower in his social and political career. If Rizal experienced K-12, he would have excelled with flying colors not only in the humanities, but also in the arts. His hands had such a talent for sketching and sculpting. Using what he had, a pen and paper, clay and wax, Rizal would use animals as his main subjects particularly birds. Can you believe that he used to sketch a bird without lifting his pencil from the paper until the sketch was finished? While I can draw his big figures. His formal education started in Binyan, Laguna, and soon after, he transferred to the Ateneo Municipal de Manila. Rizal was a kitip boy too. Just kidding. Before moving to its present location in Katipunan, Quezon City, Ateneo Municipal de Manila was located inside Intramuros. In his time in Ateneo, he got a mark of sobresaliente, or outstanding. And boy, do we wish for the same. 
He also studied philosophy at his pre lot in University of St. Thomas, but some accounts say that he was unhappy inside the home of the Tigers. And this was largely due to the same problem his family experienced despite being well off, racial discrimination. However, being well off gave him the privilege of not only studying in prestigious schools in the country, but also the opportunity to continue his studies abroad in Madrid, Paris, and Heidelberg. His time in these countries may have been part of the reason why he is conversant in 22 languages. But this time was also monumental, as it expanded his worldview and shaped his nationalist beliefs. Which would soon be a turning point in Philippine history as he began to write and criticize the hostilities of Spanish colonial rule. He can do lots of things. He can read, write, perform martial arts, sketch, sculpt, fence, teach, and farm. What can't he do? Well, apparently he can't sing. At an early age, he found that his singing voice was awful, but still he tried to indulge in playing several instruments such as the flute and the piano. Looks like the modern-day karaoke uncles won't be too happy about that. Rizal's early years are colorful and filled with curiosity and desire to learn, learn, and learn, and this earned him the deserving title of being a Paulina. How about you? Do you share similar skills and interests with Rizal as a child? Better yet, can you sing? Share these down below. We'd love to hear what you think. Like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you'd like to learn more with us. Gracias! Bidang! Arigato! Merci! Thanks for watching!